everyone, welcome back. My name is Stephanie and this is Lindy Stitches where I talk about cross stitch. I design under the name Lindy Stitches and you can find my work at lindystitches.com. I hope you're simply having a wonderful Christmas time. I'm excited because I've been recording for four years now and I've never had the opportunity to record next to my tree. I've never had such a festive background. So I really wanted to do a spoof of Ginger Gerald's Flossmas intro because it's amazing. But I think you really need the pipe and I don't have a pipe. And I think you need to be a classy man and I'm also missing that quality. So I'm gonna do the next best thing and do a Daylene and invite you in for um, my favorite Christmas cookie. What are these called? Peanut butter kisses? I call them kisses. Some people call them peanut butter blossoms. They're my favorite. I've hardly ever made them in my life. So I made them last night and they look horrible and I burnt the bottoms. But you're welcome to have one. They taste good anyway. I think I need to make maybe three, four, five more batches to get them down. Come on in. Now the first thing I want to show you is Walter in his Christmas sweater. So let me go grab him. <laughs> He's mad because I woke him up from a very lovely warm nap. He's not mad about the sweater. Here he is. This is the hand-me-down dog sweater, which you probably would not like me telling you, but um, he happily wears it and we happily laugh at him. <laughs> Awkward cat moments. Um, Hey, want to see that? That's my Brooke book, Brooks Books Advent Animals. You haven't seen it in a while, although if you've seen it on Instagram, you've probably seen it more than you care to because I've been doing a little bit of a countdown. It's been fun for me. Don't know if it's been fun for you. Uh, every year, oh, I'm going to stand up and you're going to see that I'm wearing my crazy lounge pants. Sorry, not sorry. So um, I know that people have different Christmas styles. Mine is if it makes me happy, it comes out. And so I suppose if it had to have a name, my style is funky junky Christmas because I'm just not one of those people that um, color coordinates the tree or anything. Um, I have ornaments from my childhood, my husband's childhood. People send my kids Christmas ornaments every year, and so we have 8,000 of them. They don't color coordinate. You know, I have like these weird wreath things that um, are made out of paper that my girls made. Uh, that is a really messy advent calendar <laughs> that the kids like you, they can't leave it nice, they have to rifle through it every day, and I don't bother fixing it, because what's the point? Um, this year I decorated the tree, we all decorated the tree, and then this strand of lights right here went out. What am I going to do, undecorate the tree? Whatever. So here's my Brooks Books Advent Animals, which I made into a wall hanging years ago. 2016 bygones ago. Uh, my favorite will always be the camel with the green eyeshadow and toenail polish. If you only do one, do that one. These are free patterns on the Brooks Books website under her freebie section. They are really, really fun. And I love bringing this out every year. 
Although truth be told, this was my first wall hanging that I ever made and I didn't make the best choices. I like, I love how it looks. So I like my fabric choice, my finishing choices, but um, what needs redone and what I think I will eventually redo is I chose the wrong kind of interfacing. It's too thick and so it always kind of looks wrinkly. Um, you know, here's the thing. If you never go for it, you never get better. And then once you get better, you know what you're doing. And it's not a big deal to go back and fix the things that you made while you were a novice. So this is lovely. I'm going to hang it back up. So even though I've been a stitcher for long enough to have lots of cross stitch ornaments. I do not have cross stitch ornaments because I already told you I have 8,000 Christmas ornaments. I'm not interested in having another tree. So um, I have a few. Um, these are some that my daughter did a couple years ago. Um, she had a very short cross stitching stint there and I love these. These are by Doreen Jones. And I also have some vintage ones that my mom did uh, that I love because they're tiny. And sweet. Um, I love the old ornaments. I love the old wooden ornaments, especially. Um, I love these. I've I've thought about making more of these because I think I only have one. But um, I think my mom made these. I don't know. Um, they're little cross-stitched ice skates, but the skate part is a paper clip. And I just think they're really sweet. Um, so anyway, I have a golden aardvark. Oh, I have to show you my latest ornament acquirement. That's mine. Um, I've been really fortunate I feel, I can't tell you how often I feel spoiled by this community, um, but this woman has especially spoiled me multiple times. Uh, <sighs> the feels. Um, this ornament was made for me by Diana. It is Kismet. I will link to her channel down below. <laughs> This is so pretty. I don't know the details. I think it's called Penny Angel, but I don't know who designed it. But she stitched it on 46 count. Wow, she's so pretty. And this is torn silk sari ribbon. I mean, I am loving this. I am so copying this, Diana. The whole knot, knot it and let the tails droop. So pretty. It's so pretty and classic, and I love it. And I will put it on the tree later because I like to put it exactly where my eyes land. So thank you, Diana. And um, speaking of being spoiled by the community, I sent out 160 Christmas cards. 160. And I have been getting a slew in return every day. Now, uh, the family gets like five to six Christmas cards from friends and relations. Send salutations, sure as the sky shines above. We only get five or six a year, um, probably because we don't send out family Christmas cards, but I have sp felt so blessed by my business and my customers and the many, many people that have helped me and been friends and all the loves. So it's like, Lindy Stitches is sending Christmas cards this year. I sent out 160 and um, my husband gets the mail and he makes me stack every day. Um, at first I was uh, like using some washi tape to tape them up by my desk 
and it got to the point where it was causing me some clutter panic <laughs> so I took them down because whoa whoa if you've sent me a card you have made me smile and made my day and I just want to say thank you so um I did put out a Christmas freebie. I'd like you to know about that. If you don't get my newsletter, it was in my last newsletter as well as on the back of my Christmas cards. It is a freebie that I think you could finish in two nights, a few hours. It's super fast. It is called Sprinkle Christmas Kindness and I will link it down below. But coincidentally, I didn't design it to fit in a tart but I was like hey this would fit in a tart and it looks really sweet I just stuck some of my Mary Manatee pins in it and if you've never finished a tart before I think it's pretty easy it's pretty straightforward the only fiddly part about the tart is um, getting the stuffing even you kinda have to play with it I, I'm kind of picky about the wrinkles on the side, and so I played with mine for a good long while, but it's not hard. Um, I decided to paint the inside of my tart red. I think that looks nicer, although I had to do a lot of coats to cover up that black. I just used um, multi-surface paint that I got from Walmart. So that's Sprinkle Christmas Kindness. If you would like this freebie, it'll be linked down below, like I said. I have a lot of new starts. I have a lot of FFOs. I've been trying to get through my pile of Dark October finishes, and um, it's been fun. So that means I have a lot to talk about. Let's start with new releases. I'm done for the year. Hallelujah. Here are my last two releases for the year. This is Rooftop Coco Shop. This came out in conjunction with Caroline at Off the Grid Needle Arts. She's also hosting a stitch along for this pattern, but you can, if you just want the pattern, it's in my shop. I also have floss packs that are really inexpensive because I only used three overdyes for this pattern, but you also get a strip of lace. This is Petticoat Lace by uh, Lady Dot Creates. It's just this really pale pink. And I love this pattern. This is Funky Junky Christmas. Rooftop Coco Shop. Uh, my other release was God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. This one is a little bit more involved of a project, but still pretty relatively quick and fun. Just three married gentlemen taking a Christmas snooze. Isn't there something so wonderful about going to sleep on Christmas Eve? Mama and her kerchief and I and my cat, but these are gentlemen, so they have all of their little hats. And no, that is not what the Old English means. It doesn't mean take a nap, gentlemen. It means something else. You can look it up yourself. But this is always what I think when I sing the hymn. Because naps are great. More finishes. Turkey. This is Prim Turkey by Joyce Reed. Folk art. I finished mine into a little pillow slash pin cushion. And if one of my friends is having deja vu, I did send it to you for your birthday and it was so cute I could not handle it so I had to stitch one for myself. <laughs> not the first time that has happened. Um, this is in the 2018 Punch Needle Imprint of Stitcher magazine, I think. Adorable. Another turkey. I told you I was going to finish this in the frame it was meant for. And look. 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 
this color is 100% Stephanie Webb. Um, this frame is from, okay, the pattern is Tea is for Turkey by Heartstring Samplery. Very quick, lovely stitch. Um, the frame is from Signed and Numbered on Etsy, and it's a really, I, I really like these frames. Um, not the color called for, this color is called Homestead, and I got the Super Vintage. You pick your color, and then you pick how much you want it distressed, and so I picked the highest level of distressment. And, of course, put one of my stickers on the back, pattern designed by Beth Twist, my friend, I love turkeys. Because I do. These frames actually can sit. Uh, they're so thick. Um, mine's hanging on the wall, but they give you a little peg to stick in this hole so that if you want to, you can just stand it up somewhere. Lovely. And they come in a hundred colors. Not a hundred, but lots of color options. All right. I have two more finishes. Okay. This is Eye of Newt. And I hope you're dying from how cute this frame is with this project. I I can't handle it. This is hanging up year round and I'm I hanging I'm hanging it by my bed. Um, I've decided for like this size, like smaller framed finishes, I'm just going to make a collage by my side of the bed so I can look at them all the time. And this little newt, he's just hanging out there. This I stitched on Murky. This is a pattern by Nicole from Kanikis, and you can find it in the 2019 edition of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. I can't believe I said all those words right. All those words in a row. And they all came out right. I stitched it in whatever. I think it was, I don't even know if it was the called for. But this is murky. Did I already say that? Yeah, see, I boast and then my brain doesn't work anymore. Uh, this frame I got from Hobby Lobby. This is the frame that I actually thought I might use for Rooftop Coco Shop because Rooftop Coco Shop would fit in here. Um, but as you can see, the red isn't right. Now, Hobby Lobby does make the same frame in aqua, and I do think Rooftop Coco Shop would fit nicely into the aqua frame, but I decided to make it a pillow. That was a weird tangent. Right. Last FFO. I'm so proud of this FFO. I suddenly realized that bag ladies had been hanging in my closet with my other finishes and it would fit in a frame I already owned. I was thinking I needed a special size for some reason but it actually fits in a 11 by 14 frame. So um, but I'm gonna have to go on a little tangent for this one. So this is the frame I was going to put it in. Um, it is a white ornate frame that you can get from Hobby Lobby. I've used this frame for um, Bennett Family Sampler, a release I did a few years ago, and decided to repurpose the frame because the Bennetts, they need... The theme of this last tube video is... Um, I need to redo a lot of things that I did a few years ago. Um, and the Bennetts need laced, and they were driving me crazy. So I took the Bennetts down, and I'm repurposing the frame for now. But I didn't want it in the stark white. I love the frame. I love the style. The stark white, no. Was it going to work for bag ladies? Because, pardon all my reaching. I want to hang it right next to this, which hangs above my ivory stitching throne. This is a portrait by Renoir. I don't remember what it's called, but it's easily found. Um, I got this off art.com. 
for a Christmas gift, but you can see the, the frame is an ivory with like um, brown distressing, and I wanted them to match. So that's what I did. I see so they match. I feel really smart uh, because I am not uh, an expert by any means with painting things. You can tell just by my face. I'm not an expert about painting things. In fact, there is a frame that is in my garage. I think I've painted it five or six times and it always looks stupid. But I decided to go for it. I got some chalk paint from Walmart. In ivory this is easy I love this frame if you love this frame it's easy take it from a not great painter um, so I hit it up with the chalk paint in ivory and then Walmart also sells this but I think it's kind of junk um, they call it a wax but it's more like a paint I don't really even know what it is it's weird. Um, I think Minwax in the dark antique or whatever the antique -y color would work way better than this stuff because even the directions are strange. However, it worked fine. Um, I just hit up the raised areas with that fake wax from Walmart and distressed it up. And I think it looks really good. And there are the bag ladies. So I'm going to also hang this above my stitching chair. I don't have a lot of room left on that wall, but I found one more thing that needs to go up there. In the same vein of Catwoman that I'm hoping to have by my next video. It's a print from an artist on Etsy, and I died when I saw this painting. Anyway, the reason I wanted to share how I changed the look of the frame was because our framing options are limited. Um, lots of us have access to a Hobby Lobby. I think the, this frame, they don't make it in other colors, but take it from an, a painting novice it was really easy to change the look of it I think I mean how gorgeous would it look in a dark a darker town it would be fun also I don't know if anyone needs this tip but I absolutely despise when a picture frame has the two hangers on the back because the chances of me nailing two picture hangers into the wall for one picture and making sure they're exactly in the right spot and level. Let's just say there's not a chance of that happening. So if you tie them together then, and also when you do that it can be hard, like if it's just a wee bit off, it can be hard to balance it, right? Because they're just like stuck there. Um, if you tie them together then you only have to put up one picture hanger and you can adjust it. I don't know. I don't know if anybody needed that but that was a game changer for me. Let's get into what I'm working on. Which is many many things. Um, I've just started a lot of stuff. I don't even know why. Um, I think I went from dark October happiness to Christmas happiness, and I've had some fun. Let's start with my biggest new start, uh, Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. I bought this off McKenna's charity auction for breast cancer, and <laughs> I actually started watching, and this is the only thing I wanted. And I didn't even know if she had it or not, but I said to myself, if she has this, I'm just, I'm gonna, it's mine. So, <clears throat> I'm sure you all know what Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow looks like. Um, this, 
I don't know if you've heard, but the Hawk Run Hollow pieces are huge. And if you're like me and you're really not into stitching on 40 count or higher, they're really huge. Um, so this is what Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow looks like. The stitch count is 278 by 371. If you're going to stitch it on, let's say, 36 count, that makes it 15 and a half by 20 and a half. That's a big mama jama. So, it's kind of overwhelming, and I don't want to be stitching Christmas all the time. Because my Christmas spirit doesn't last that long. I keep Christmas in my heart all year long. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stitch one a year. So when the Christmas spirit hits, I'll stitch the next block. So this will take me nine years. There's 12 blocks, but I will tell you my plan. I am totally not sold on my fabric choice. So there is a good chance that I might get this out next year and just finish this block because... <laughs> I don't know. So, um, because I don't really enjoy stitching with one strand and I'm not a 40 count stitcher, I had to choose, you know, I had to start it then, um, right away. So I had to choose something in my stash and this was really the only thing that flew. Um, that's showing up a little bit lighter than it actually is. This is Cappuccino by Week Style Works. I think it's a 35 count. I'm stitching with two strands, and I still don't really know how I feel about the color. It kind of depends on the day. Sometimes I'm like, that's ugly. And other days I'm like, that was genius. <laughs> I don't know. Um, another thing is like, some of these colors are just kind of bizarre to me and I say that in all love and respect to Kathy Barrick because I think she's an amazing artist but like this taupey pink coupled with this electric yellow and then I think my fabric choice makes it even a little weirder so I'm not sure where this piece is gonna go but I finished the first block I put the year in over one 2019 right there I think it is pretty and looks better in the camera than it does in real life Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow now there are certain blocks on this piece and again I love Kathy Barrick and I love what she does I did Kathy do this one Okay, I get confused about the timeline of carriage house samplings, but regardless, whether it was Kathy or not, I do not like these people. I don't like this block. And so I kind of thought I would rearrange it and just get rid of my least favorite blocks and maybe, um, so they give you a sheet where it kind of just shows you the blocks. And so I photocopied it and taped it up. And I think this might be my piece. So that would eliminate the people. There's just something about their faces I don't like. And then I know like some people love this block. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I can always rearrange as the mood strikes and maybe not the ice skaters but if i'm going to make it one row shorter i have to eliminate three i want to keep the ones with the words in it do you know about longfellow that he, he wrote this hymn i heard the bells on christmas day you really should read about his life he had an amazing life tragic tragic life anyway that's totally beside the point um that's my hawk run hollow so it kind of feels good to, to stitch that one thing. It's a big piece, but I'm just gonna put it away till next year. We'll see what happens. So that was my first new start. Uh, I don't know what orders these went in and you don't care either. 
I am stitching one of my old retro Lindy Stitches patterns. This is from um, my beginning days when I wasn't doing necessarily waiting to stitch the model. This is one of my two one of my two Golden Girls samplers. This is the Walk Fast sampler, and it features. There's a police car going by. It features a proverb from Rose Nyland. It says, it's like that old Scandinavian saying, you can lead a herring to water, but you have to walk fast or he'll die. I've always loved this and I'm going to stitch it up because I love it. For some reason, this is selling a lot again. And usually from the Etsy analytics, I can sometimes trace it back to like a post somebody did or something. Not with this one. I don't know. I don't know why it's getting a revival, but I'm all for it. I've, I've wanted it stitched for a while. So I did a col classic color works conversion for this chart and I will be updating the chart after I am done with my model. So, you know, again, improvement, and you can go back and make your previous work better. Um, I, even looking at my PDF, I can do better than this now. I've improved, and that's life, and that's great. Um, this looks kind of, it's fine, it's professional, but I can do better now. This is my other, Golden Girl Sampler. Okay, I'll show you what I have. Here are my colors. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be so fun. This bejeweled is going to be part of the fish, the herring, uh, as well as um, amber waves. I used this in my Skinny Wolf farm piece and fell in love with it. And these are beautiful colors. These are pretty much right on conversions from my DMC. So I am using Regency by Week Dye Works. 32 count. And Ryan, thank you for this needle minder. I use it literally all the time. That, that's as far as I got. Border. But I think this is going to be awesome. I'm all about it. So that's Walk Fast Sampler. You can find that in my shop. And once I update it, I will offer, you know, if you've already bought the pattern, I will definitely send you the update. Next, new start. Let's see what's in here. I've just been out of control. I started Heartstring Samplery's I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm. I've had this for a couple years. My mom gave it to me for one Christmas, and I love it. I love this song. I love this stitch. Okay, so the deal with this is... I'm stitching it one over one on 25 count. Now 25 count is really a big weave and you can see it really easily. So I say, oh, I'm stitching it one over one. It's not really that big of a deal other than I have to use one strand, which I'm not really a fan of, but I love this fabric and I love the idea of this piece on this fabric. And so I'm just putting up with the one strand stuff. So this fabric is hard to photograph and show you what it actually looks like, but it is called Rosemerta by Under the Sea Fabrics. And yeah, my phone is just washing it out, as it always does. It's a very pale pink, and it has brown modeling, but you can't see any of that. I am stitching this with a variety of dark blues, which kind of seems odd, but... It's looking good. So I'm using Wrought Iron by Gentle Art, um, Inkwell by Color and Cotton, and then for the accents I'm going to use the Silk 
that Ingeborg sent me that I can't wait to use. And it's gonna look amazing. So tiny. And um, I have enough fabric, so I'm thinking, ooh, I could even do three. I think Beth has three of these band samplers with old songs on them. There's uh, something about mistletoe and then my funny Val Valentine. Mm-hmm. And then caught them up and like they would be so cute. Like little, like thin, a little thin frame. Put it on the wall beside my bed. That's what I'm thinking. All right, that's that. Man, I was, I already said it. I was, I'm, I was out of control. So then I had to take a car trip. The stories go on. <laughs> then I had to take a car trip. And I just grabbed this fa la 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 llamas and um, I started it. Now, I said this on my Instagram live, but I assumed um, that I would hate stitching with perforated paper because some people that like I love and I share a lot of opinions and preferences with said, oh, I hate, I hate stitching on the perforated paper. I always replace it for fabric. But I'm glad that I tried the paper. You gotta try everything for yourself. Steph, really? You just gonna... I can be very gullible. I just believe everything that people tell me. Um, I love the perforated paper. The reason is, I get nauseous in the car. I cannot stitch on anything but Ada. And I don't... I hardly have anything on Ada cloth anymore. So that means I hardly can just stitch in the car. It's like the jostling... Like, the car's always, like, jostling. Like, how can you see? I can't see. So, this, you can see. It's so easy to see. And this isn't, like, an easy pattern, either. This isn't just, like, filling. This is, like, you know, I was, like, counting out and, like, marking the chart. Um, so I'm back to car stitching. I'm back to car stitching. I'm trying to find something to hold this up. Um, the holes are so easy to see. And it feels really good in your hand. I don't know. It's just like you can hold it and don't need a hoop. Don't need a, don't need your Lowry stand in the car. Just. It's great. So I'm not working on that. So two of these starts so far, I'm putting them away for special circumstances. This one, only for the car. Which I try to avoid going anywhere if I can avoid it, so that one will probably not be completed anytime soon. I did do some stitching on my Chatelaine, which I think is the second to last whip I have to show you. Those were, no, those weren't all my new starts. I lied. I want to finish this thing. I want to finish this thing real bad, but not bad enough to stitch on it. Um, the last time I pulled this out was shortly after my last video, and um, I said, self, give me a break. I started this in 2015. Get on with it. This is no, not 2015. Whatever. It's old. I don't. I get old. Get done with it. Um. So I pulled it out and I was like, "Okay, you're stitching on this till it's done." I was like, "Yes, I am. I will conquer." And um, I did one corner and then I put it away. I just quit. Here's what I did. As you can see, I didn't even bother to finish off the strand. So dedicated. Um, here's the corner I completed. Um, nothing really to report. So there the whole thing is. And I have... I only have one tree section and one corner left. And then I can beat it. And then I can hang it in the closet. The closet of glory. I have
had a cat hair in my mouth. Um, I'm planning on making like, once I get done with this project, I might make like a Chatelaine overview of what I have learned um, through this project because I've learned a lot. Um, one thing I have learned is that Martina sometimes, how do I want to say it, didn't realistically chart. Um, because, for example, this, I don't think my phone will focus, but, um, this over one grasshopper, she wanted me to stitch, which I did it. It's, it's very messy and not great looking. Um, she wanted me to stitch over one using silk pearl, pearl silk and um, water lilies. No, wildflowers. Which, if you've stitched with wildflowers before, you know that it's like stitching with a rope. So every now and then it's like, <laughs> what? And usually because I assume, you know, she was a genius. She was a genius. So I, I come across these things and I'm like, what? That is impossible and nigh unto, it's not going to look good. But then the other voice in my head says, yeah, but she was a genius, just do it. So sometimes I make my own decisions when these things come up and sometimes I just do what she says and <laughs> it ends up looking kind of crazy because it is crazy to stitch over one on 32 count using wildflowers. There it is. This has got to get finished in 2020. Can you cheer me on? I don't know at what point I'm going to get to this, but yeah. Okay. The last project I have here um, is my own design, and I decided to stitch it myself at some point. I might try to hand it off to one of my model stitchers, but I just wanted... Um, sometimes I need the ability to be able to play with my color choices and make sure that they're not dumb. So this sampler... I don't know that you'd call it a sampler, but this piece is going to be my May bird <laughs> bird release. <laughs> so the last two years I have released a bigger um, sampler type piece with an awesome quote and birds and border lusciousness and um, I just want to keep doing that because I love birds and I love lovely words and um, so this is going to be this May's release and I'm excited about it. I actually found a poet on Instagram who releases quotes of their poetry and I saw this quote and immediately it was like, that has to be stitched yesterday. Contacted the poet and said, hey, this is what I do. Would you mind if I used it? And very gracious. They were very gracious. Absolutely. So I charted something up, and I'm just going to show you the back. You can just pray. <laughs> There's nothing mysterious about showing you the back. There's no mystery there. You can see exactly what it is. Okay. So when I start stitching my own designs, it kind of derails all my other personal projects, which kind of stinks, but I want to get Mushroom and Fern done. And all my other things. Other things to tell you, I had a giveaway in my last video for the 1813 Samplers Not Forgotten um, Pin Cushion Kit. And the winners were Diana Harris and Jill Bennett. I have gotten in contact with both of them. Jill's already gotten her kit, and Diana will get it 
after Christmas per her request. So thank you for giving me all your thoughts about uh, whip donation, adoption, um, giving up, not giving up. It was fun to read all your different perspectives and yeah. My only haul item for this video, I've been a good girl I have. Not Forgotten Farm Folk, ha folk House. I bought this from Cheryl the Wayside Stitcher on her D stash. Oh, man. This is so cute. You could do it in any colors and it has a room that just contains two really chubby cats. So, had to get it. I'm planning on doing a 2019 wrap up video. Plans for 2020. That will be my next uh, floss tube installment. Um, but until then, I would like to read you a poem. Before I read the poem, I do want to again reiterate that if you have sent me a Christmas card, Christmas greetings, or dare I say, a couple of you have sent me gifts in the mail that were completely unprompted and a surprise, and I am so undeserving, which I realize is the point of a gift. It's an act of kindness, but unworthy am I of the gifts that you've given and I freak out like a little child on the inside whenever it happens and um, am sometimes a little emotional uh, I I'm just a regular woman living in the Midwest raising children like a thousand other women around me and before me who am I that you would think of me and send me an assortment of hand-baked cookies? Really? <laughs> the latest book you read that you thought I would love, which I'm reading and I do love it. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas. You're so kind an antique that it just like has my name on it arrived and I'm <sighs> okay I'm going to read you a poem called Christmas Eve by Christina Rossetti it's good you should listen to it Christmas hath a darkness brighter than the blazing noon Christmas hath a chillness warmer than the heat of June Christmas hath a beauty, lovelier than the world can show. For Christmas bringeth Jesus, brought for us so low. Earth, stripe up, strike up your music. Birds that sing and bells that ring. Heaven hath answering music, for all the angels soon to sing. Earth, put on your whitest, bridal robe of spotless snow. For Christmas bringeth Jesus, brought for us so low. And Jesus is my favorite and most. Most precious gift. Whew. Okay, um, that wraps it up. I truly hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Kiss somebody under the mistletoe, even if it might be a little awkward. I mean, don't force yourself on someone. You know what I mean. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, and I'll see you before the new year.